Good afternoon. Hi. Hi, I'm Miss Henderson. I am your nurse today, and today I'm here to do your blood pressure. Is that okay with you? Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm going to go wash my hands and bring my equipment. So according to the Center of Disease Control, we are supposed to wash our hands 15 to 20 seconds in order to minimize the transmission of infection. Wash my hands, I come back. I am going to do the two identifiers. Uh, what's your name? Oh, Miss Yolanda. Hi, Miss Yolanda. How are you? Good. Miss Yolanda, what is your date of birth? May 10. Okay. Her date of birth is May 10. I get my two identifiers, date of birth, and check patient's ID. So my equipment are, I have a, blood pressure cuff. This is called a Spigmo manometer. It goes from zero to 300 millimeters of mercury. I have my, this is where you pump. This is the releasing valve. I have my stethoscope. This is the part that goes into your ears. This is the diaphragm of the stethoscope. And this is the bell of the stethoscope. The diaphragm of the stethoscope main purpose is to pick up high pitch sound. The bell of the stethoscope is to pick up low pitch sound. So it's important that I have my patient positioned in an in a very comfortable, please uncross your legs, Yolanda. You're not cross, oh. uncross your legs. Oh. Just uh, make sure your legs are firmly on the floor. With oh, they, they have to be yes, it oh. has to be dangled on the floor. Okay, when you're checking somebody's blood pressure, ask her, do you have any history of hypertension? Do you take any medications? No. You don't? No. Okay, so have you exercised within the last 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. Have you drink any coffee? No? Yes, in the morning. You drank some coffee in the morning? Yeah. Okay, what time did you have the coffee? Night, night. Okay, so um, now it's approximately close to one o'clock. So, you know, that was a while back. Um, have you been running or anything like that? No. Okay. Make sure your patient has no access. Um, make sure she don't have an IV on her arm. Make sure she don't have a, um, a dialysis access site. Some patients get dialysis and they have to have an AV fistula or an AV shunt. So you cannot do blood pressure or vena puncture on a arm that has an access site. Okay. If your patient, do you need to use a bathroom? Do you have a full bladder? That's an important question to ask your patient because sometimes if they have a full bladder, that can also alter the blood pressure. It can make the blood pressure goes up. So, Miss Yolanda, I am going to place um, the cuff around your arm. So, make sure she's nice and relaxed. So next thing, make sure your blood pressure cuff fits on very snugly. Make sure it's not too tight or it's not too um, loose. It has to be two finger breaths. Then the next thing you wanna do is to palpate her brachial artery. And I can feel her brachial artery right here. So that is where I am going to be placing the diaphragm of my stethoscope onto her brachial artery.
So Miss Yolanda's blood pressure is a, her systolic blood pressure is 110 and her diastolic blood pressure is 80 millimeters of mercury. As I said before, the systolic blood pressure is the, um, when the ventricles contract, that's the upper number. It's called systolic. The bottom number is the diastolic. That's the relaxation of the ventricle when the ventricle is filled, refilled with blood. So may, it's important that you let your patient know, Miss Yolanda, your blood pressure is 110 over 80 and it is within normal limits. So inform your patients of the findings and document it in the chart. So the next skill I want to show you is to check a patient's um, temperature. So as we know, there are different sites in the body to check temperature. We have the tympanic, we have axillary, we have oral. So today I'm going to show you how to check a patient's oral temperature. So, again, when you're checking someone's oral temperature, you have to also ask them if they had something hot or cold to drink. Because if they had something hot or cold to drink, what happens? It will cause the temperature to go up if they have something hot. If they have something cold, the temperature will be low. So the normal oral temperature is 98.6 to 98.8 or 9. That's normal. So I have my thermometer here. Place it into a sleeve. Um, I'm going to instruct my patient, Miss Yolanda, can you open your mouth? I'm going to place this under your down, and when it beeps, that's when I'm going to record your temperature. Close. So you kind of hold the thermometer here, and then it beeps. It beeps like around a minute or two, and when it beeps, that's when you record the patient's um, temperature. Um, okay, very good. It's 97.6, it's normal. So her temperature is 96.9 and that's within normal limits. I wanna say um, it is contraindicated to do an oral temperature on a patient if a patient comes in and they have facial trauma. They have their face, they had an automobile accident and there's a lot of facial trauma or your patient had a stroke and they have slur speech. Are you gonna put a thermometer into their mouth? No, it's contraindicated. If a patient have a, a, a seizure disorder, they go into convulsion, you can take an oral temperature. You will take a rectal temperature, okay. So the next thing I wanna do is to check Yolanda's um, radial pulse. There are different sites in the body that you can measure someone's pulse. You can do the carotid pulse, it's five to 10 seconds, there's a carotid pulse, right? You check it five to 10 seconds. You could do the radial pulse, you could do the brachial pulse, you could do the femoral pulse, you could do the popliteal pulses, but for this class, I will only show you how to do the radial pulse. So the normal pulse rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. So I have my watch here and I am going to trace her radial artery and I'm going to count her pulse for one full minute.
in this Yolanda. Your pulse is 72 beats per minute. It's regular, doesn't skip a beat or anything that indicates you have any dysrhythmias or anything like that. It's normal. 6200 is normal. The next thing I want to show you how to check a patient's respiration. When you're checking a patient's respiratory rate, you do not tell them that you're counting how they're breathing. You can pretend that you have your hands on their radial artery, but you're checking how many times the rise and fall of the diaphragm. The normal respiratory rate is 16 to 20 breaths per minute. The respiratory rate is 14 breaths per minute and that's with the normal limits. Miss Yolanda, do you have any pain? Are you in any pain or discomfort? No. You have no pain? No, no. Okay, so pain is the fifth vital sign. So you talk to your patient, ask them if they have any pain. If they don't have any pain, that means they have zero pain. If your patient states that she has pain, you have to assess it. The location of the pain, the intensity of the pain, she has to rate her pain from a scale zero to 10, what level the pain is at. So these are all the different variables and different factors. Um, thank you so much for your time, Ms. Yolanda, and have a great day, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye.